Thanks for joining us. I'm Anita Bath. We begin with new revelations in Canada's growing conflict with India. Sources have confirmed to CBC News that the federal government has evidence linking Indian diplomats to the killing of a Suri Gudwara leader. Also new is the timeline of this diplomatic crisis. Sources say these accusations were brought to India's attention well before a tense meeting between Justin Trudeau and Narendra Modi at the G20 summit. Evan Dyer now with how Canada got this intelligence and how it all unfolded. Bonjour tout le monde. Days after a shocking accusation, the Prime Minister insisted he did it with good reason. But I can assure you, the decision to uh, share these allegations on the floor of the House of Commons Monday morning was not done lightly. Canada has declared... And now CBC News has learned from senior government sources that when he stood in the House, Trudeau had both human and signals intelligence that showed the involvement of Indian government officials in the murder of a Sikh leader in Surrey, B.C. back in June. Hardeep Singh Nijar was a prominent member of a separatist movement labelled a terrorist by India. Some of the intelligence from intercepted signals includes communications from Indian diplomats present in Canada. But it wasn't all gathered by Canada's own spy agency. Some of it came from a Five Eyes ally, a group that also includes Australia, New Zealand, the UK and the US. One of those allies has been more forward in its support for Canada than any other, the United States. I have seen in the press some efforts to try to drive a wedge between the United States and Canada on this issue. And I firmly reject the idea that there is a wedge between the US and Canada. The U.S. is trying to draw India into a closer security relationship, but Sullivan said today that India has to be accountable. We will stand up and defend our basic principles, and we will also consult closely with allies like Canada uh, as they pursue their law enforcement and diplomatic process. As that transpires, India is applying more pressure on Canada as it stops issuing visas for Canadians hoping to visit, accusing Trudeau's government of providing a safe haven for terrorists. The reason is that we have seen Canadian diplomatic interference in our internal affairs. Government sources say Canada is weighing a response to the visa suspension, but has made no decision yet. India appears to be making efforts to win the United States over to its side as well, with Modi issuing a formal invitation to President Joe Biden to be India's guest of honor at Republic Day in January. Joe Biden hasn't yet accepted that invitation, but the Financial Times is reporting that Biden raised the Nidra murder directly with Modi when he met him in New Delhi during the G20. We also know more about Canadian government contacts with the Indian government prior to that Narendra Modi meeting where Justin Trudeau made these allegations directly to the Indian Prime Minister. Canada's National Security Advisor Jody Thomas traveled to India on two occasions before that, once for four days in mid-August and then again a couple of days before Trudeau went to the G20. And we're hearing from Canadian government sources that whatever Indian officials say in public, they haven't denied these allegations in those private meetings. Evan Dyer, CBC News, Ottawa. Now, that political rift and the suspension of visa services is having very real consequences for people in this province. As Lindsay Duncombe shows us, many hoping to travel to India just had their plans turned upside down. This is not what Santosh Santu expected when she bought tickets to India for October. She's still waiting for her visa, but now that's in jeopardy. The government of India suddenly declared visa processing is suspended, officially due to security concerns at offices like this. But Santu blames prime ministers, two of them. India's Modi and Canada's Trudeau have left us all distraught, she says. The visa decision follows Indian outrage after Canada accused the country of being involved in the murder of Hardeep Singh Nijar, a Sikh separatist India considered a terrorist. We are the ones who are going to suffer and not the diplomats. Myself and my Manbir Singh is worried he might not make a family family. wedding. There's a panic right now in in the city that everybody might not be able to go. In 2021, 80,000 Canadian tourists visited India. Late fall is an especially busy time due to warm weather, festivals and weddings. Maitri Bat is also worried about missing a wedding, her own, on October 26th. We have planned a three-day event and we have 
booked our venues. We have like renders all paid for. Honestly, don't know anymore. Like the, everything's just shattered. Like I just feel like the ground just shattered underneath me. The same timing. This travel agency doesn't have all the answers its customers are looking for. Will planes fly? Will Canadians be safe? We cannot give the answer. We are saying just calm down, stay calm. One can only hope that uh, the there is a successful resolution to this. And I won't call it a spat, I'll, I'll call it a crisis. This is quite unprecedented. A crisis that just went from being geopolitical to incredibly personal for so many. Lindsay Duncombe, CBC News, Surrey. More now on India's suspension of visa services in Canada and the impacts to those who rely on travel between the two countries. A Canadian immigration lawyer also says it's the public who will be hurt by this diplomatic rift. Whenever we deal with uh, international disputes, it's the ordinary people that uh, find themselves caught in the crossfire. Uh, my thoughts right now are for my clients. My thoughts right now are for individuals like my parents that immigrated uh, to Canada um, from India many, many years ago. Um, so that diaspora is stranded in, uh, in Canada without that overseas citizenship of, uh, of, of India. Uh, there is no more e-visas. There is no more visa consular services for Canadians, uh, ostensibly because of security concerns, but they won't, they won't even issue a visa to a Canadian, even if that application is made outside of Canada to a different uh, council. So we can't, we've got people stranded in, in Canada. They can't rush back if there's any sort of family emergency. We've got a massive disruption that's going to happen in terms of tourism, both sides. Um, we're going to have uh, uh, a freezing of, of relations, and that will extend to the business world and, and obviously joint ventures. I'm joined live now by Setwinder Baines, Associate Professor and the Director of the South Asian Studies Institute at the University of the Fraser Valley. You know, there's been some criticism toward Trudeau for coming out with this information, but not providing anything concrete. India has also called the allegations absurd, but just hours ago, CBC learned there is communications intelligence linking Indian officials, including Indian diplomats present in Canada, what do you make of this new revelation and how much more credibility does it give to Trudeau's claim? I think uh, there's a lot of relief that uh, this came out today uh, after three days of just staying in uh, a liminal state of not knowing where the evidence might end up. I think there's a lot of fear and unsettlement in people's minds about the evidence as it as it unfolds. So as it is unfolding, you know, there's some comfort in knowing that the decision that the Prime Minister made to come out and tell the Canadian public something so, um, you know, horrible. And, and we, we were so shocked by hearing the news. Uh, and, but to know that it is done so seriously, it is a very serious allegation that Canada is making. And it's not been done lightly. It gives great comfort to us that People have spent the time. In, I always assume that uh, you know intelligence had done its work. That the prime minister would not make such an allegation without the proper kind of evidence behind it. How long do we expect this, you know, visa situation to last? This is the busiest time for travel. Mm -hmm. Well, from now until about March, uh, for travel for British Columbians going to India, um, are people just expected to sit back and wait and see? Yes, I think so. You, there's not much we can do. You have no power in these situations. It's happened once before. Uh, it it feels like it'll last for a while while this diplomacy take kicks in. And right now is a bit of a ping pong game going on between between Canada and India. But it's going to have to take some real diplomacy for this to shift. Uh, there is a large uh, diasporic population that is really invested in Punjab in India and as in the subcontinent. Uh, so there has to be a shift, but whether, I don't believe it'll happen really quickly. You talk about that ping pong, you know, restricting visas is just one thing. What else could change in the long term? Well, I think relations, international relations with India around trade, around education, you know, whatever we're doing with, with India is going to suffer. Uh, people will not feel the comfort of knowing that these are open door policies, that we Canadians are well respected and uh, uh, have a really good relationship. All that is going to suffer. And on Canadian soil, we also feel the stress of this conversation and what's happening in Canada because you know, as model minorities, we want to ensure that our contributions to Canada are valued. And this kind of, you know, tarnishes our image a bit. And 
I know we're up for it. We're resilient and we can handle this and we can, you know, come out on the other side. But there is some stress and some, you know, fear, I suppose, of retaliation. And we don't know what kind of re retaliation will happen. Uh, I hope uh, cooler heads will prevail and that uh, we will come together and find some resolution. Set Winder Baines is an associate professor at UFV, also the director of the South Asian Studies Institute there. Thank you so much for joining us live. Thank you.